Liberty City, no one locks their car doors. Despite the alarming number of vehicles that are stolen on the streets, these brave citizens, and even those of Vice City and San Andreas, still drive with their seatbelts unbuckled and access to their number one transportation method wide open. Why take a cab when anything with four wheels can be yours? Throughout the Grand Theft Auto franchise, many of these moving treasures have received major bodywork and a new paint job. Here are the most recognizable autos you can steal. I'm robbing you. Don't make me kill you. As in any major metropolitan area, service vehicles can frequently be seen, like taxis, ambulances, fire trucks, trash trucks, security trucks, buses, helicopters, and limousines. These changed colors depending on their city of origin, but their concept has remained relatively the same depending on the era. Armored police cars and FBI vehicles began keeping the peace at four stars or above in Grand Theft Auto 3. Much to the surprise of fans, the tank, aka the Rhino, wasn't included in the GTA 4 attack force. The only vehicle that rolled out in GTA 3 but was originally created for GTA 1 is the Stallion. It resembled a Ford Mustang, but in GTA 4, its slight hints of Oldsmobile and Cutlass came through more prominently. The Stinger also appeared in GTA 1, but vanished after Vice City. It was first assembled with characteristics of a Chevy Corvette, but the GTA 3 model more closely mimicked a Porsche Boxster. Grand Theft Auto 4 put a next-gen sheen on a lot of the familiar rides in the franchise's garage, but there were a few lines that got discontinued. The BF Injection, actually a Myers-Manx dune buggy, the Cheetah, a replica of the Ferrari Testarossa, the Linerunner semi-truck, Idaho mid-size sedan, and nondescript Pony and Rumpo vans disappeared. But several recognizable brand names returned in GTA 4, either continuing to pay homage to their original inspirations or flashing new styles. The bottom of the 2008 line included the cargo hauler flatbed, the Moonbeam minivan, the Bobcat pickup, a Dodge Coupe remake called the Manana that swapped styles with the Buick LeSabre in GTA 4, and the Esperanto, a near clone of the Cadillac Eldorado. Roman Bellic used the updated, possibly Chevrolet-influenced Esperanto in his taxi service. The Landstalker, originally manufactured by the Maibatsu Corporation, has been the doppelganger to several popular SUVs over the years, from the Jeep Wagoneer, to the Ford Explorer, to the Lincoln Navigator. The Patriot has always been an unmistakable Hummer, with the newest iteration borrowing traits from the recent Hummer H2. Some next-gen models also now sport a trendy American flag design. The Banshee has always been one of the most sought-after high-speed sports cars, with the Liberty City and San Andreas versions angled to imitate a Dodge Viper. The Vice City rendition copied an 80s Corvette. The only thing potentially faster is the Infernus, which has had numerous influences over the years. In GTA 3, it took after the Vector M12, in Vice City resembled a Lamborghini, in San Andreas it looked most like an Acura NSX, and in GTA 4, it stole its body shape from the Diablo SV. These are certainly not the only cars in the Grand Theft Auto franchise that have received inspiration from real-life automobiles. The highways of Liberty City, Vice City, and San Andreas are crammed with parking lots full of instant transportation options. Grand Theft Auto 4 alone boasts over a hundred different models. But these are the ones that, for one reason or another, have either made the generation jump or been trucked off to the scrap heap. When you're out there test driving all these stolen pieces of property, don't forget the popular vehicles that inspired them.